Welcome, I'm Robert Esther here at livingpianos.com and virtualsheetmusic.com with a technique video, how to play a glissando on the piano. You know, you've all heard it, you know, at the end of a blues jam. And it always excites, it sounds so impressive. I remember as a kid trying to play glissandos and ending up in tremendous pain. So I'm gonna show you how to play glissandos today, painlessly. All right, so what is a glissando anyway? A glissando basically is a slide over all the keys. String players, for example, can do a glissando smoothly on one string, moving their finger up on the fingerboard, getting all the notes between. Same thing with a trombone, you've all heard it. There's a glissando. Well, on the piano, of course, the pitches are quantized. So it's almost like a fast scale passage but it's not a precise fingered thing. It's just a glide with the hands over the keys. So how do you achieve this? Well, I'm gonna show you. The secret is to get the angle straight up so you're not impacting your fingers at all. Here though is the wrong way to do a glissando. First, I'll show you the painful way that I learned as a child not to do, which is... Now, why is that so bad? Because it tears up the skin above the fingernails. Now, if you do the same thing, but angle the fingers almost at a right angle, close to a right angle to the keys, it's just the nails then that play the glissando. So that's all there is to it. Now, glissandos can be done with different fingers. Sometimes a descending glissando with the right hand might be played with the thumb like this. It's the same principle where the angle must be straight up, almost straight up, so that it's the nail that does the work. You can even do black key glissandos painlessly, although you must be more careful with this to get that angle precise, or they can really bang into, your, uh, into the cuticles and, and really be quite painful. But if you do it with the right angle, you can get it and it doesn't hurt because it's the fingernails that take the whole beating. Now, the one other little technique for ending a glissando, a lot of times you have a glissando up to a certain note. If you've ever watched some of the Marx Brothers movies, there are some fantastic scenes <laughs> that you've got to see where they do glissandos and kind of poke out notes. It's, it's really funny, but there is actually some truth to the technique that they use. So for example, if I wanted a glissando going up and ending on a high C here, I might play the glissando and then play that high C with the second finger like this. By using a different finger for the final note, you have a better chance of getting that last note. And even if you don't hit the very last couple of notes before the final note, it doesn't really matter. It just gives the effect. So to recap today, when playing glissandos, be sure the angle is almost perpendicular to the keys, so it's the nails that play the glissando. If you want to end precisely, you can use a different finger for the ending note on glissando. As long as you follow those rules, you should be glissando pain-free. Thanks for joining me, Robert Esther here at livingpianos.com and virtualsheetmusic.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.